Like so many people during lockdown, I started baking. So here you can see some of the things that I've produced during lockdown. And as a chemical engineer, I'm fascinated by how the process works. What is it actually that makes you bake rice? And the reason behind this is carbon dioxide. While we obviously know this is not good for the environment because it's a greenhouse gas, uh, and also when you're working with sensors like I do, then actually bubbles create a lot of problems. But within a bake, it's a carbon dioxide that makes your cake have that perfect kind of fluffy texture. There are many different ways of how you can make your bake rice. So I will talk about yeast first, then I will show you what baking powder does. Finally, what we call here bicarbonate of soda or baking soda. What's the difference between those three? What we know as baking yeast is Saccharomyces cerevisiae. This is a member of the fungus family that can break down glucose and fermentable sugars. So what happens when it kind of breaks down the sugars, you produce carbon dioxide, which gives these air bubbles that kind of trap within the dough and give it that fluffy structure, but also it creates alcohol. So within the brewing industry, it's also very interesting to know the content of yeast that you have. And in my lab, we've looked at what's the influence of particular parameters such as the temperature and the pH on the growth of yeast. And sometimes in pizza recipes, you might see that there's extra sugar to it, which is for the yeast to feed on. Now, the alcohol when it's formed, so part of it is associated with the flavor you've got of bread, but also when you put it in the oven, it starts to evaporate. So it's also thought that the bubbles from the ethanol also help to make the dough rise. Now this was about pizza. Cakes is actually a more complicated scenario. From the eggs, you get egg white, then you've got flour, and then you've got gluten, and all together that forms a solid network. But in a cake, we obviously know that we've got butter and we've got sugar as well. And butter and sugar actually kind of undermine that network. And that's why you've got a structure which is relatively a lot softer compared to bread. You would normally start by mixing the butter with the sugar. And Normally you would recommend to do that by hand because when you manually do that, you actually kind of mix in pockets of air within that mixture. However, during lockdown, I did get a kitchen machine and for simplicity and for saving time, that's very helpful as well. The next step is you need to emulsify the mixture and you would do that by adding in eggs where you form this emulsion. Now the eggs, if you would listen to Nigella, they would always say that the eggs have to be at room temperature. Because if they're not, and if they're still cold, you get these little chunks of butter uh, in your recipe at the end. So once you put it in the oven, there are three different ways of how you can form these carbon dioxide bubbles that actually give the cake that fluffy structure that you want. The first is when you were mixing the butter and the sugar and you were manually adding air to the mixture. The second, when you start baking it, your water starts to evaporate. So the moisture starts to evaporate and you also start to form bubbles from there. But the key one, and that's the third one, is your raising agents. And here I'm going to explain how baking powder and how baking soda works. Baking powder actually works based on an acid-base reaction. So you would have an acid in there, you would have a base, and then you would also have something to absorb the moisture. Now you would use baking powder instead of yeast when you don't want to have this fermentation flavor. So a typical flavor that you have in bread and in pizza in your product. So this baking powder really sped up the production. And because of that, and because you don't get that typical kind of fermentation flavor like you would have in breads or in pizza, that led to the creation of new products, such as cakes. Now, what's the difference then with bicarbonate of soda? Baking soda then only contains the base. So what it means is that you need to have something acidic in your mixture and for it to react with. So this can even be chocolate, it can be buttermilk, it can be cream of tartar. So people knew about this long before they started to discover baking powder. So in that case, you need to balance out the acid uh, with your baking soda, because if there's not enough to react with, it leads to a product that has like a bittery, soapy taste. So now you should know the difference between these three products and when you use what. And next time when you bake your cake, think of all the chemistry and all the science that goes in it. If you want to know more about the chemistry or the engineering aspects behind everyday things in life, please subscribe to our channel or look at our latest videos.